bought this apron a number of years ago and it served me very well. What I found is when working with leather, a lot of this dust just does not want to clean out. If we look at this and see that even after brushing the surface, and some of it's not even showing up on camera, there is just so much leather dust embedded in here. Now these pockets um, do have flaps, but still wind up collecting quite a bit of, of dust. Now I like the overall shape, but there's a few things that I don't like. So we're going to maintain this and use this as kind of a, a general overall pattern. We'll keep the width across the top the same, but instead of having fixed attachment points for the straps, we'll use some D-rings. We're going to get rid of all of the pockets on the front, yet we'll still have these pockets. We're just going to place them on the inside. This works great when you're standing at the workbench. However, when you start working sitting down, I find that it's not quite long enough, so I think we're going to add some length to it. I do like the width at the top and I do like the curve on the side. So we'll go ahead and stick with this and use this uh, in our pattern. And we'll, we'll approach the, the D-rings on the side the same way, probably with some reinforcements though, placing a D-ring on a tab and then having the straps loop through and secure in the back. And we'll look more at that in a later video. The nicest thing though is since we're going to make this out of leather, everything will just fall off as soon as we stand up. We won't have to worry about all the dust accumulating. Now, as I mentioned, we are going to make some adjustments to the design. Uh, in order to keep them symmetrical, what I'm going to do is fold this in half in order to make my initial pattern. We can then make the adjustments on that. As this is rather large, uh, instead of using poster board, I'm actually going to use a roll of uh, a heavy brown craft paper. I'm going to go ahead and make a mark at each corner. Now this curve is one of the areas that we want to adjust. I want to keep the height the same, but I want to bring this out an inch wider. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark there, and then just adjust and use this curve, tracing carefully because it is soft, to give us our new shape. Grab a straight edge and connect all of our marks. The length is one of the main areas that I wanted to adjust. So the existing apron comes down to just above my knees. Uh, I wanted a little bit extra length, and I think six inches is probably going to do it well. So from this initial pattern, there's a couple of additional things that I am going to do. I know that I want to reinforce the upper edge where the straps are going to attach to. I think the best way to do that is going to be extending this up, folding it over, and then stitching it. That way, whenever I attach the, the straps, or the rings for the straps, we wind up with a doubled layer uh, as well as the strap attachment. So we'll go ahead and add about two inches, which should give us plenty to attach to. I also want to provide some reinforcement where the straps attach on the sides. We're going to come in with some rings off of here, so we'll wind up with a, a tab stitched on top. So in order to give this uh, some reinforcement, I'll extend this out the side. We can fold that in and then stitch that as well. Now in keeping with the name of the channel, this wouldn't be overbuilt if I didn't take the time to roll all of the edges. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and add in an extra half of an inch to give it a nice finished edge. All right, so let's go ahead and get this cut out and then we can mark our leather. What I've decided to use for this is some three to four ounce oil tan in this kind of nice distressed looking pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this out and I'm going to use a, an Omnicron. These are water based so uh, they mark well and if you don't press too hard they don't leave marks in the leather and then you can wipe them away licking your finger or a, a damp sponge afterwards. Similar to how we made the pattern I'm going to go ahead and mark the corners as well as the curve and then use a straight edge to connect all of the lines. So you may have seen this in some earlier videos. Uh, this is a little Fisker's hobby knife. Basically loops over your finger and takes all of the pressure off of your thumb. If you got a little bit of arthritis in your hands or carpal tunnel, this thing is just great. 
and I'll go ahead and put a link down below. So let's go ahead and get this cut out. So there we have it. I don't want to leave the edges full thickness when I roll them over. What I'm going to do, since we're looking at a half inch uh, for the amount that we're going to roll over, is I'm going to mark this out at one inch up, draw a line to give me a guide so that we can come back with our skiver and trim this down to reduce the overall thickness. So I haven't reduced this to a feather edge, but I did lighten it up about by half. This will still give us a substantial edge to finish off. And we'll go ahead and run some glue, let that dry, then we can roll over the edge and hammer it. All right, now with that set up, I'm gonna go ahead and begin to roll this over, lining up the edge with the pen mark that I made. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the clean face of my mallet, and I did mark it so I know which side strikes tools and which side I can use on leather, to hammer this down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and glue all of the edges and then punch for the stitching. A good tip whenever you're rolling and lining something up like this, regardless of what material it is, is to start a little bit ahead, line that up, and then work backwards a little bit. You're never going to start from one end fold and make it all the way down perfectly aligned. You're going to have little buckles here and there. By moving ahead and then moving backwards a little bit, you're able to absorb some of that extra material um, and get it to still line up. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for all of the straight edges and we'll come back when I do the curves uh, underneath the arm cutouts as those are going to be a little bit tricky. When we get to the tabs, we have a little bit of a challenge because we're not rolling these over directly in line with the rest of it. What I'm going to do is make my mark a half inch in, which is where we're going to fold it. And then we'll line this up with the fold right there. And this fold as it should be. I'm going to go ahead and put a line Right where this lines up. That way I know exactly where this is going to uh, land when I glue it. And I have a line similar to this to line the edge up with. This is going to be a little bit different. It's not as straightforward as just folding this directly over. We're going to have to stretch this as we glue this down. The rest of the work is for the most part the same. We still need to place a line about an inch in, sky the edge to thin it a little bit, although it's going to be a little more important to thin this now, that way it stretches a little easier. Also, where we have these tabs folded over to reinforce where the, the rings will attach, we need to skive this down a little bit to thin this so that there's not a, a, a large amount of bulk right above that ring. After we finish this, we'll go ahead and roll the top down, and then all the edges will be done. I'll go ahead and stitch them, and then come back after they're stitched to take a look at the next steps. So the only piece left to do is folding down this top edge. Now this will be the line that we fold over to after we apply our glue. So now all of the edges have been rolled. The next step is to mark out our stitching lines, uh, stitch the edges, and then we'll begin with making the pieces for attaching the D-rings and straps.